Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Okay, moving right along in Math 8, we are now entering Lesson 1 of Module 4. And it is writing equations using symbols. So the classwork exercises that we're going to do is to convert sentences into mathematical equations. Okay. So, number one says, write each of the following statements using symbolic language. The sum of four consecutive even integers is negative 28. Now, before I go on here, this is a very common type problem, consecutive. And keep in mind that our even numbers are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on and so on and so on. Forever and ever and ever. Even numbers. The word consecutive means one after another. So the first two consecutive numbers are two and four. The next consecutive would be six. So the first three consecutive are two, four, and six. And that's what they mean here. First four consecutive are here. Now it does not mean we're starting with two. The answer could be 10, 12, 14, 16. It could also be negatives as well, as we can see right here. Okay, so consecutive integers. It says uh, the sum of four consecutive even integers is negative 28. Well, if I don't know the value of the first one and I call it x. So let me just explain this first. So if I say at two is x, well, in terms of x, then what is four? Well, four is this first two plus two or x plus two. So in other words, we're letting x equal two. So, so x equals 2, meaning the first term, x is 2. So the second term is that first term plus 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. The third term, to get 6, I'd take x, my first term, which is 2, and I'd have to add 4 to it. And then finally, 8 is x being 2, it's 2 plus 6. So these are a representation of in consecutive integers when you don't know any of the numbers exactly. So it says find the sum. Now we have to focus on the wording in our sentences. The word sum itself means to add. The word sum of four consecutive even integers is, okay? Is means to equal. So we know where our equal sign is, and it says is negative 28. And it says the sum, we're adding them up, four consecutive even integers. So if I take the four consecutive even integers, x, and I add the next one, which is x plus 2, and usually we represent that in parentheses to represent a number, okay, plus x plus 4, that's my next even integer, and then x plus 6. Okay, so there's 1, 2, 3, 4 consecutive integers. The sum of them equals negative 28. Now, if I clean this up a little bit and get rid of those parentheses, I have x plus x plus 2 plus x. Because with addition signs, we don't need the parentheses. This would be x plus x plus 2 plus x plus 4 plus x plus 6 equals negative 28. It does not say to solve. All it said was express using symbolic language. So there it is. Okay, number two. A number is four times larger than the square of half the number. Okay? So first of all, let's let x be the number. Okay, so in terms of x, a number, a number is, is, a number is, equal sign, four times larger Larger meaning plus or greater than. Multiplying four times larger would be multiplying by a positive number. Four times smaller would mean to multiply by a negative number. Okay, so four times larger would be 
4, or would it be multiplying by a negative number or multiplying by its reciprocal? Hmm. Okay, anyway, we're going larger in this one. 4 times larger is 4 times larger than, so I'd multiply 4 times larger than the square of half the number. So if I take that number and divide it by 2, that's half the number. X is the number. Half of X is X divided by 2. And if I square that, then I multiply it by 4. That's what this is saying. A number is 4 times larger than the square of half that number. So there is my expression. That one was a little tricky. Okay, next one. Stephen has some money some money. Um, we can use x, we can use any other variable. Let's just you, you stick with x for now because it's going to lead into graphing probably eventually. And we usually use x and y for graphing. So Stephen has some money x. If he spends nine dollars, then he will have three-fifths of the amount he started with. Okay, so he's got some money. Say it's a hundred dollars. x is a hundred. He spends 9 of it. Well, 100 minus 9 would be 91. So no matter what the value he had, 9 less than that is represented by the number, the amount he had, minus 9. So he spends $9. There it is, x minus 9. Okay, so if he spends $9, then he will have, then he will have 3 fifths the amount he started with. Then he will have 3 fifths of what he started with. Okay. It's not asking you to solve this. This is just setting up algebraic expressions. So there it is. We could solve for it and find out what x equals, just like we could up here and here. But it's not asking us to, so we'll just continue with setting them up first. Uh, number four, the sum of a number squared. Okay, for starters here, this is. let's read the whole thing through first. The sum of a number squared and three less than twice the number is 129. Now, if you just read that just like I did, you are no better off than before, and it doesn't make sense. We need to break this down, but what I see is the word less than, and that means minus, and the word less than means to read it in the opposite direction. This was sixth grade material. Six or seventh, I don't remember. But anyway, the word less than tells you to go the opposite direction. All right, the word is, is equals. And the sum means to add. And whenever it says of something and something else, then the word and is where that plus sign goes. So this is now our new little template here. So we're talking about this as an expression, an equal sign, a constant or a, a value on the other side, which is our, if this is x, this is our y. Uh, the sum of a number squared, okay, a number squared, and three less than twice the number. So maybe these parentheses and stuff will help. So a number squared, some number squared, and sum plus three less than twice the number. Read it in reverse because of the word less than. Twice the number, twice the number, less than three is, now I'm over here, is 129. So there it is, x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 129. The sum of a number squared and 3 less than twice that number is 129. Number five, Miriam read a book with an unknown number of pages. The first week, she read five less than one-third of the pages, okay? Five less than, less than means minus, read it this direction. One-third of the pages, we'll call the pages P. One-third P less than minus five, five. One-third P minus five. That is the first week. I will put that in parentheses just to keep it separate. There's week one. The second week, she reads 171 more pages and finish the book. OK, 
Okay. The second week, she read 171 more pages. More pages meaning add. So week one, she read this many pages. Week two, she read 171 pages. And write an expression that determines the total number of pages. Okay, so it would be one-third P minus 5 plus 171 equals P. Okay, and then the parentheses aren't necessary, but I just like to group things. This is week one, and this is week two. Okay, that is the end of lesson one. Review the lesson summary and go do your problem set.